check, check, check one, check one, two, three, check. So we have exactly two minutes. Two minutes, the reading will start. So we're standing by to go live in one minute. It is 9.20 hours, ladies and gentlemen. 9.20 a.m. on Thursday, the 25th of November, 2021. Force Executive Officer Commodore A. Weems Gorman, Brigade Commander of the Jamaica Regiment, Colonel M.G. Price, Brigade Commander of the Maritime Air Cyber Command, Brigadier R.A. Williams, President of the Caribbean Military Academy, Brigadier R.N. Mason, Brigade Commander of the Support Brigade, Brigadier M. A. Lloyd. Brigade Commander of the Jamaica National Reserve, Colonel R. Bligen. Other members of the General Staff Board, Senior Staff Officers, other officers, Force Sergeant Major W. O. One A. Forbes. Brigade Sergeants Major, Regimental Sergeants Major. Other Warrant Officers, Senior NCOs, Junior NCOs men and women of the Jamaica Defense Force, members of the diplomatic corps, representatives from government ministries, visiting militaries present, distinguished ladies and gentlemen in the audience, families and friends of the Jamaica Defense Force, ladies and gentlemen, good morning to you all and welcome. Welcome to Upper Camp, the home of the Jamaica Defense Force, but more importantly, Welcome to the presentation of colors for the Jamaica Defense Force 2021. I am Major Clinton Brown, and later on in the program, I will be joined by my co-host. Together, 
we have been assigned the duties as narrators for this presentation of colors ceremony. However, before we get into the proceedings, ladies and gentlemen, please allow me the opportunity to familiarize you with the layout of the grounds. By now, you'd be seated facing the parade grounds with the air wing hangar and the long mountains in the distance providing a most beautiful backdrop for this morning's parade. I am currently located in the small press box at the side of the pavilion. The tented area in front of the main press box are the A stands and are reserved for VVIPs and VIPs. The bathroom facilities for the VVIPs in the A stands are located down the steps left and right of the press box and to the rear. The bathroom facilities for the VIPs in the A stands are located to the left of the stands in the vicinity of the medical tent. The stands located to the left of the press box are numbered B1, B2, and B3. B3 being the stands closest to the building with what looks like a control tower, that is the fire base. If you're sitting in any of the B stands, your bathroom facilities are located directly at the foot of the steps prior to entering the stands. The stands located to the right of the press box are numbered C1, C2, and C3. C1 being the section closest to the press box. If you're sitting in any of the C stands, your bathroom facilities are located directly at the foot of the steps prior to entering the stands. In addition, there are various stations set up around the grounds equipped for sanitization purposes in keeping with the Ministry of Health's COVID-19 protocols. There are also ambulances parked at strategic locations around the grounds with trained medical personnel equipped to deal with any medical emergency. And I, hope, and I also hasten to urge you, ladies and gentlemen, to maintain your physical distancing. There is also a shop located on the floor of the fire base. They have snacks and refreshments available on sale for your convenience. Now that we're more familiar with our surroundings, ladies and gentlemen, please allow me to introduce my co-host, the beautiful, the exciting, a lady who is definitely no stranger to Up Park Camp, ladies and gentlemen, Miss Faye Ellington. Thank you very much. Good morning. Thank you, Major Clinton Brown. And thanks to the Jamaica Defense Force for including me in this historic event, Presentation of Colors 2021. Let me welcome viewers in Jamaica and overseas to the televised broadcast of the streaming platforms. A little history on the colors will be helpful here. In battlefields of old, regiments would form lines and advance towards the enemy, literally shoulder to shoulder. Perhaps the greatest motivation driving scared men into imminent danger was the companionship of their comrades about them. It was this bond that epitomized the regiment and still does today. Regiments need a powerful visual symbol with which confused soldiers could readily identify on the battlefield. It was to this that troops would rally, and it was behind this symbol that the line would advance. The color is the official ceremonial flag of a military unit, originally of an infantry unit only. And in this context, it is sometimes used in the plural when referring only to a single flag. The Queen's color is the senior of the two. It is carried on parade only when a guard is mounted over a member of the royal family. His Excellency the Governor General and Commander in Chief and for visiting heads of state. It is only trooped for members of the Royal Family, His Excellency the Governor General and Commander in Chief and on occasion of ceremonial parades if the commanding officer so desires. In the regiment, each battalion carries two colors which together are called stands. These are large flags, usually 36 inches by 45 inches and mounted on a pike which is eight feet seven and a half and a half inches in length. The Queen's color is a replica of the Jamaican national flag, often trimmed with gold fabric and with the regiment's insignia placed in the center. And now the regimental color. The regimental color is a flag of a single color, 
usually of the regiment or unit, again, often trimmed with gold, and with the insignia of the regiment in the center. The regiment colors personify the unit's ethos, and although they are nothing but sheets of embroidered silk, once consecrated, they have come to be venerated and treated with reverence. Normal compliments are paid to colors when marching on or off parade by all troops. On parade, the colors will always be carried by a junior officer, an ensign, escorted by armed senior non-commissioned officers. Even when encased in their protective leather casings, they are marched under armed escorts. Colors were last carried in battle by Her Majesty's forces in the Boer War. Although traditionally in the JDF only the infantry regiments were presented colors, today all five brigades of the JDF will be receiving new colors from His Excellency the Governor General, Sir Patrick Allen. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, whether you were here physically or joining us via live feed from one of our various platforms, welcome. We're indeed very glad that you're able to join us for this historic occasion. In a moment, the guards will be marched onto the parade grounds under the command of the Brigade Sergeant Major, Warrant Officer Class 1, Michael Moulton. Warrant Officer Class 1, Michael Moulton, is currently the Brigade Sergeant Major for the Jamaica Regiment. He has 35 years of military service and was appointed Brigade Sergeant Major of the Jamaica Regiment in June 2020. He's assisted by the Parade Drill Sergeant, Warrant Officer Class 2, Brian Martin. Warrant Officer Class 2, Martin, is currently the Drill Sergeant Major for the 4th Battalion, the Jamaica Regiment. So they march onto the parade grounds, ladies and gentlemen. Five guards representing the five brigades of the Jamaica Defense Force, marching at a regulation rate of 116 paces to the minute, to the tune of the mechanized infantry composed by K. Alfred. The guards being played onto the parade grounds by the masked bands of the Jamaica Defense Force, the Corps of Drums of the Jamaica Regiment, under the maze of the Drum Major Staff Sergeant Ramoy Dawkins of the Jamaica Regiment, the combined mask band's drums is conducted by our own Director of Music, Lieutenant Rafael Salazar, and he is accompanied by Warrant Officer Class 1, Paul Johnson, the band master of the Jamaica Military Band, and Warrant Officer Class 1, Gregory Nicholson, the band master of the Jamaica Regiment Band. So there you see them, ladies and gentlemen, marching on in the reversed order, left leading the Jamaica National Reserve, then the Caribbean Military Academy, the CMA, then the Support Brigade, there followed by the Maritime Air Cyber Command, and finally, ladies and gentlemen, the Jamaica Regiment. old colors of the 1st, 2nd, and 3rd Battalions of the Jamaica Regiment are marching on deep in the rear and will make their way south of the parade square to await the escort for the colors. The new colors under the command of the officer in charge of the new colors, Captain Shane Patterson, will be brought out just in time for the consecration and the presentation. Patterson has the task to ensure that the new colors are present and all persons concerned with these new colors are rehearsed and ready for this 
presentation. Now halted by the brigade sergeant major and will be formed in two ranks and dressed by the center. This is the shuffle, ladies and gentlemen, the shuffle. It's a drill technique used to quickly get oneself aligned and covered off into their position. This is done to ensure that the soldiers on parade are properly aligned in rows and columns, thereby ensuring that there is the required interval and distance between ranks. Having dressed the parade and ordered them to stand easy, the Brigade Sergeant Major W01 Michael Moulton now awaits the arrival of the parade adjutant. The parade adjutant is Captain Calvin Dryden. Captain Dryden has 34 years of military service. He was commissioned from the ranks in 2019 and is currently the officer commanding the administrative and logistics company at the Directorate of Training and Doctrine.
having handed over the parade to the parade adjutant, the Brigade Sergeant Major W01 Michael Moulton now takes up his position at the center rear of the parade. Adjutant Captain yep. Calvin yep. Ryder now yep. prepares yep. to hand over the parade to the parade second in command. Parade second in command is Lieutenant Colonel Rudolph Reynolds. Lieutenant Colonel Reynolds has 25 years of military service. He enlisted in the Jamaica Defense Force in 1996 and received his initial officer's training at the Royal Military Academy, Sandhurst, United Kingdom. He currently serves as the commanding officer of the 10th Battalion, the Jamaica National Service Corps. Having handed over to the parade second in command, the parade adjutant, Captain Calvin Dryden, now marches to his position on the far left of the parade. The parade second in command, Lieutenant Colonel Rudolph Reynolds, now prepares to fall in the officers. The officers were previously marched onto the pass line, awaiting the command to fall in on parade. Officers, to your guards, slow march.
Tschüss. Officers, eyes, front, stand out, ease, stand, easy. Having fell in the officers, the parade second in command, Lieutenant Colonel Rudolph Reynolds, now prepares to hand over to the parade commander. The parade commander is Colonel Rohan Johnson. Colonel Johnson has 29 years of military service, having enlisted in the Jamaica Defense Force in 1992. He received his initial officer's training at the Commander Training Center, Royal Marines, Limstone. Colonel Johnson currently serves as the Colonel General Staff in the headquarters of the Jamaica Defense Force. Sir, parade is formed up in open order with bayonets fixed, awaiting your disposal. Sir. Having handed over to the parade commander, the parade second in command, Lieutenant Colonel Rudolph Reynolds, now marches to his position on the far right of the parade. Today, on parade, a total of 634 men and women and 44 officers of the JDF, drawn from all five brigades, will participate in this presentation of colors ceremony. So whilst we await the arrivals, ladies and gentlemen, let us tell you a little, about, a little bit about the men and women comprising the guards on parade. The number one guard is furnished by the Jamaica Regiment. The number one guard commander and commanding number one division is Major Finnecke Rowe. Subaltern of the number one division is Lieutenant Shanice Williams. The number two division of the number one guard is commanded by Major Andres Pierce. The subaltern of the number two division is Lieutenant Ray Maria Campbell. The right guide is Warrant Officer Class Two, Winston Pitter. The left guide is Staff Sergeant Christopher Walters. The number two guard is furnished by the Maritime Air Cyber Command. The number two guard commander and commanding the number three division is Major Gladstone Allen. The subaltern of the number two division is Lieutenant Daryl Gordon. I'm sorry, the number three division. The number four division commander is commanded by Lieutenant Commander LeVar Carter. 
The subaltern of the number four division is Sub-Lieutenant Wijon Henry. The right guide is Warrant Officer Class 2 Dalston Fagan. And the left guide is Chief Petty Officer Okello Fullerton. Number three guard is furnished by the Support Brigade. The commander of the number three guard and commanding the number five division is Major Joel Nelson. The subaltern of the number five division is Lieutenant Tony Ann Panton. The number six division is commanded by Major Danelia Crawford. The subaltern of the number six division is Lieutenant Adrian Thorpe. The right guide is Warrant Officer Class 2, Joshua Knight. The left guide is Staff Sergeant Gaynor Reed. The number four division, I'm sorry, the number four guard is furnished by the Caribbean Military Academy. The number four guard commander and commanding the number seven division is Major Akeen Horton James. The subaltern of the number seven division is Lieutenant Fitzroy Simpson. The number eight division is commanded by Major Jennifer McKenzie. The subaltern of the number eight division is Lieutenant Tejon Scottman. The right guide is warrant officer class to Richard Cohen. And the left guide is Staff Sergeant Nicholas Halsall. The number five guard is furnished by the Jamaica National Reserve. The number five guard commander and commanding the number nine division is Major Marlon Stevens. The subaltern of the number nine division is Second Lieutenant Rochelle Ellis. Then the number 10 division is commanded by Major Andrew Lamb. The subaltern of the number 10 division is Second Lieutenant Dwight Johnson. The right guide is Warrant Officer Class Two, David Marsh. The left guide is Staff Sergeant Ransford Burton. And the keepers of the ground, ladies and gentlemen, the keepers of the ground are provided by the Caribbean Military Academy and are under the instructions of the commander of the keepers of the ground, Sergeant Damien Brown. And he is assisted by Corporal Kimani Pasco and Corporal Kevin Evans. The first official arrival Ladies and gentlemen, let us acknowledge the arrival of His Grace, the Most Reverend Kenneth Richards, Roman Catholic Archbishop of Kingston. He is accompanied by Major the Right Reverend Damien Friend. He will be met by the Force Chaplain, Lieutenant Colonel the Reverend Denston Smalling. The official arrival now of the Chief of Defense Staff, Lieutenant General Rocky Meade and Mrs. Meade. Lieutenant General Meade is the 11th senior officer to lead the Jamaica Defense Force and the first to have been promoted to the rank of Lieutenant General. 
Ladies and gentlemen, it is customary that you stand on the arrival of the Chief of Defense Staff. Hold! All right! Shut! Ladies and gentlemen, the Chief of Defense Staff, Lieutenant General Rocky Mead and Mrs. Mead have arrived. Lieutenant General Mead will be met by the Acting Inspector General, Commander Judy Neal. He will be escorted to the saluting days where he will receive a sword salute from the parade commander. You may have noticed that as the CDS steps from his vehicle, his identifying standard was broken out and can be seen flying from the left outermost flagpole. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. You may be seated. And now, the official arrival will be that of the Prime Minister and Minister of Defense, the Most Honorable Andrew Holness. Ladies and gentlemen, upon arrival, you're expected to stand. Ladies and gentlemen, the Prime Minister and Minister of Defense, the Most Honorable Andrew Holness, has arrived. Please stand. The Prime Minister will be met by the Chief of Defense Staff, Lieutenant General Rocky Mead, and escorted to the saluting days where he will receive a general salute from the parade.
please remain standing for the general salute. You may have noticed as well that as the Prime Minister alighted his vehicle, his identifying standard was also broken out and can be seen flying from the left inner flagpole. Guards, general salute. Present arms. Guards, shoulder. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. You may be seated. And now, the official arrival of His Excellency, the Governor General, the Most Honorable Sir Patrick Allen. Ladies and gentlemen, His Excellency, the Governor General, the Most Honorable Sir Patrick Allen has arrived. Please stand. Excellency, the Governor General will be met by the Chief of Defense Staff, Lieutenant General Meade, and escorted to the saluting days where he will receive a royal salute from the parade. You are reminded that you're required to remain standing for the royal salute. You may have noticed as well, ladies and gentlemen, that as the Governor General steps from his vehicle, his identifying standard was also broken out and can be seen flying from the inner right flagpole.
Guards! Shoulder! Ups! Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. You may be seated. The parade commander, Colonel Rohan Johnson, will now approach the saluting days, pay the required compliments, and invite His Excellency the Governor General to inspect the parade. Your Excellency, the parade furnished by the brigades of the Jamaica Defense Force is formed up in open order with bayonets fixed, awaiting your inspection. Sir. The ceremonial Land Rover will be brought around for the inspection. The Governor General will review the parade from the vehicle and will be accompanied on the inspection by Lieutenant General Meade, the Chief of Defense Staff, and Colonel Rohan Johnson, the parade commander. Major Dwayne Hill, the aide de camp, ADC, to His Excellency the Governor General, will be seated in the front of the vehicle. The ceremonial Land Rover has been driven by Sergeant Denver Levy of the Supporting Services Battalion Transport Unit. The Land Rover will head north between the band and drums, make a right U turn, then travel down the front of the five guards and up the rear, making sure the Governor General gets a good view of the men, women, and assets presented for inspection today. This shiny Land Rover 3 JDF 28 is now in its, wait for it, 59th year of service, having been taken on the inventory of the JDF on the 28th of February 1962. It was first used on the occasion of the visit of Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II in that same year. So, 59 years ago, ladies and gentlemen, and since then, the odometer reading on this beautiful machine is a whopping 2,338 kilometers. You heard right, 2,338 kilometers in 59 years. It simply means the vehicle travels an average distance of 41.3 kilometers per year. That's about the distance from Spanish Town in St. Catherine to Maypen in Clarendon. Yes, I know if you're a car collector, <laughs> you're probably now thinking that it would be a nice price to add to your collection. But I have been instructed to tell you that the answer is no. This Land Rover is not for sale. Today is indeed an historic day for all members of the JDF, and the men and women on parade are well rehearsed and focused on nothing but the immediate task of delivering a high standard of drill for this parade. The parade stands against a backdrop depicting the true spirit of the Jamaica Defense Force and of this historic presentation of color parade. In the backdrop are assets of the JDF, including trucks and buses used for troop transport, two protected mobility vehicles or PMVs. These are armored personnel carrying vehicles and came into the JDF in October of 2015 to replace the older V-150 models two cat front and load tractors used for all earth moving purposes, two 25 ton Mack trucks, two Hilux pickups, ambulances, two land cruiser patrol vehicles, two Bell 505 helicopters, the Bell 505 and the Bell 429s were brought in to replace the Bell 412 EP and the Bell 407 which were previously considered the workhorses of the JDF Air Wing. The Bell 429 is now the main operational helicopter used by the JDF. Two 40-foot Boston Whaler. The Boston Whaler is one of the JDF Coast Guard's inshore patrol vessels, or IPVs. And as you may well be aware, the JDF commissioned its newest ship HMJS Nanny of the Maroons in July 2020. 
this simply means, ladies and gentlemen, the Jamaica Defense Force will get there by whatever means necessary, be it land, sea, or air. Having completed the inspection, His Excellency, the Governor General, will return to the saluting days where the parade commander, Colonel Rohan Johnson, will request permission to carry on with the remainder of the parade. Your Excellency, may I have permission to carry on with the remainder of the parade? At this point, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to invite His Excellency the Governor General to his seat whilst the parade commander makes preparations for the remainder of the parade. The parade will now be stood easy, and the parade commander will give the order for the masked bands and drums to commence the troop. Pageantry is the tune being played. The masked bands and drums are made up of members of the Jamaica Military Band, the Jamaica Regiment Band, and the Corps of Drums is the Jamaica Regiment. Leading the masked bands and drums is the from Major Staff Sergeant Ramoy Dawkins doing the ceremonial state walk in slow time. Directly behind the drum major is the director of music, Lieutenant Rafael Salazar. To his right, warrant officer class one, Paul Johnson. Gregory Nicholson, the band master of the Jamaica Regiment Band.
decked in their ceremonial number one dress uniform. This point, ladies and gentlemen, you may have noticed the old colors to the south of the parade, waiting to be marched to the center for the handover. breaks into quick time to return to its original position, the tune Officer of the Day. You may notice that this time the old colors point where they would, they would be retrieved and handed over to the ensigns. Note carefully also, ladies and gentlemen, at this time, the lone side drummer, Corporal Janoy Barnes, being detached from the band and drums, making his way across the square, he will fall in beside the number one guard, where he, he will play the drummer's call as a signal to the escort for the colors to move before he rejoins the band. If you look closely as well, you should see the Brigade Sergeant Major W01 Moulton making his way from the center of the parade to the rear of the number one guard. You may also notice a lone soldier, Lance Corporal Janil Burrell, coming from the rear of the parade in order to take the pace stick 
of the Brigade Sergeant Major. This action will allow the Brigade Sergeant Major to be able to draw his sword. This is the only time that the Regimental Sergeant Major in case of a unit or the Brigade Sergeant Major in case of this parade will be permitted to draw his sword whilst on parade. Thereafter, command will be handed over to Lieutenant Chenille Williams as the escort for the colors is detached from the main guard to make its way center to retrieve the old colors. The escort for the colors are furnished by the Jamaica Regiment. Escorts for the colors. Escorts for the colors. Shoot. Escorts for the colors. Shoulder. Arms. Escorts for the colors. In close order. The practice of trooping the color originated in an old guard mounting ceremony at which the queen's color was a symbol of the sovereign and of the country, and the regimental color, the emblem of the soldiers of the regiment. During trooping, every man has a close view of the colors whilst paying the highest Ready. possible honor by presenting arms in salute. Oh, the whole ceremony is one of symbolic trust and reverence. Colors are not usually carried except by an officer. This ceremony, however, starts with them in the charge of a sergeant and two sentries guarding them from harm a token of confidence in the men. 
Previously, you saw where the subaltern, Lieutenant Janice Williams, assumed command of the right guard, a tribute to Good youth, fight. and a symbol of the responsibility with which youth is expected to assume. The brigade sergeant major draws his sword during this ceremony, the only occasion on which he does so. This is in order that he may pay full honor when saluting the colors before returning them to the custody of the officer. Only before the presentations of new colors are the queens and regimental colors trooped together. W01 Moulton is an infantryman of 35 years. Today he gets the rare privilege of drawing his sword as an other rank on this parade. In the regiment, each battalion has two colors, which together are called stands. You would have noticed the brigade sergeant major saluting the stand of colors before taking the queen's color first and taking it to the senior ensign. Notice as well that the ensign paying, paid compliments to the colors before returning his sword and taking custody of the colors. The brigade sergeant major remains in position until he is assured that the ensign has taken full custody of the color before moving on. He will then return for the regimental color. For almost 60 years, we've grown accustomed to only infantry regiments in the JDF having colors. This ceremony today will see a new custom being adopted as individual units will no longer have unit colors, but, but each brigade or formation will get its own set of colors, and therefore each unit in that formation will be able to identify under their formation's colors. The rare opportunity of drawing a sword as another rank was only given to five regimental sergeant majors in the past. W01 M.E. Townsend for the 3rd Battalion in 1965, W01 Martin Bag Martin for the 2nd Battalion in 1986, W01 Byron Clark for the 3rd Battalion again in 1996. W01 Jimmy Campbell for the 1st Battalion in 2007. And in 2014, W01 Clinton Brown for the 2nd Battalion. Today, for the Jamaica Regiment, W01 Moulton, the Brigade Sergeant Major, gets the rare opportunity of taking three stands of colors and handing them over to the ensigns.
there will be a lot of sentiments attached to these old unit colors, and many will hate to see them go. But today, ladies and gentlemen, we usher in a new beginning. Once all the colors have been retrieved and handed over, the escort for the colors will now become the escort to the colors. The parade. The parade will now be called to attention and the escort to the colors will present arms for the anthem. You will be required to stand for the national anthem. Color party! Airboat! Stand.
bit of the history of the colors. In military organizations, the practice of carrying colors, standards or guidons, both to act as a rallying point for troops and to mark the location of the commander is thought to have originated in ancient Egypt some 5,000 years ago. The Roman Empire also made battle standards a part of their vast armies. It was formalized in the armies of Europe in the High Middle Ages, with standards being emblazoned with the commander's coat of arms. The regiments of the Jamaica Defense Force carry a legacy dating back to those origins as a representation of the journey behind and that which is to come. Within the Jamaica Regiment, each battalion carries two colors in British tradition, the Queen's color and the regimental color. Escorts to the colors! Huh? So the old colors prepare for the final troop, ladies and gentlemen. Some interesting facts, ladies and gentlemen. The colors of the 1st Battalion was presented on the 23rd of November, 1963, to the late Lieutenant Colonel Dunstan Robinson, who went on to become Chief of Defense Staff of the JDF. 44 years later on, in June 2007, his son, Lieutenant Colonel Derek Robinson, in the capacity of the commanding officer of the battalion, had the rare honor of receiving the replacement colors on behalf of the battalion. The colors of the 1st Battalion would be paraded on notable parades such as the opening of Parliament at Gordon House, honors and awards at King's House, the Remembrance, the, the Remembrance Day Parade at Hero Circle, the state funeral for the late Governor General Sir Flores El Glasspool, and most notably, public duties at Buckingham Palace, St. James's Palace, Windsor Castle, and the Tower of London. Trooping the colors for the 1st Battalion here today are 2nd Lieutenant Romaine Carr carrying the Queen's colors and 2nd Lieutenant Matthew Dawkins carrying the regimental colors. And now the history of the 2nd Battalion, 2JR colors. The 2nd Battalion, the Jamaica Regiment, 2JR, received its colors on the 31st of July, 1986, and then on the 31st of July, 2014. On the 31st of July, 1986, the colors for 2JR was presented by His Excellency, the Governor General, the late Sir Florizel Glasspole, here at the Porterfield in Up Park Camp. 
1986, the color was proudly received by Lieutenant Colonel Retired Nesta Ogilvie, who was the commanding officer at the time. The regimental sergeant major was featured in that significant milestone was the late major retired Trevor Bagger Martin, then warrant officer class one Martin. Both the commanding officer and the RSM were immortalized in history by virtue of being the battalion command team to have received the first set of colors for 2JR. On the 31st of July 2014, marking precisely 28 years subsequent to the initial presentation of the colors, the unit received its second presentation of the colors. At the time, the new colors were presented by His Excellency, the Governor General, the Most Honorable Sir Patrick Linton Allen, right here at the Polo Field in Upper Camp. The colors were presented to Lieutenant Colonel, retired, Dylan Christopher Lovan, the commanding officer at the time, and Major Clinton Brown, then Warrant Officer Class 1 Clinton Brown, the regimental sergeant major at the time. It should be interesting to note that the parade commander for today, Colonel Rohan Johnson, was a second in command of the battalion at that time. On both occasions, the presentation of the colors was done under adverse weather conditions that resulted in the colors being completely soaked. After the parade had culminated, the color had to be transported to the Lathbury Barracks guard room under escort and sun dried for approximately three weeks. These colors of the 2nd Battalion would be paraded on notable parades such as the opening of Parliament to Gordon House, Honours and Awards Ceremony at King's House, the Remembrance Day Parade at Hero's Circle, and also notably public duties at Buckingham Palace, St. James Palace, Windsor Castle, and the Tower of London. Trooping the colors for the 2nd Battalion today are 2nd Lieutenant Verton Douglas carrying the Queen's colors and 2nd Lieutenant Alik Ellis carrying the regimental colors. We will continue with the history of the colors shortly.
So continuing with the history of the colors, ladies and gentlemen, the 3rd Battalion, the Jamaica Regiment National Reserve, on the 30th of July 1965, received its first stand of colors, granted by His Excellency, the Governor General, the late Sir Clifford Campbell. The battalion was commanded by Lieutenant Colonel C. A. Moody at the time, and the regimental sergeant major was W. O. 1. M. E. Townsend. In 1975, the battalion became the first reserve unit outside the United Kingdom to parade its colors for the occasion of the visit of Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II to Jamaica, which lasted five days. On the 31st of July, 1996, the new colors were presented to the battalion on Armed Forces Day by His Excellency, the late Governor General, the Most Honorable Sir Howard Felix Hanlon Cook, and was received by the commanding officer, Lieutenant Colonel V. L. Walden, and the Regimental Sergeant Major, Warrant Officer Class 1, B. L. Clark. Trooping the colors for the 3rd Battalion today, our 2nd Lieutenant Johnny Giwa Agbamirelli, carrying the Queen's colors, whilst the 2nd Lieutenant Mikhail Sadler carries the Regimental colors. Ladies and gentlemen, a reminder that as the color passes by your location, you are required to stand. off to rejoin the ensigns carrying the colors for the 1st Battalion, Warrant Officer Class 2, Frederick Miller, Staff Sergeant Leo Nicholas, Sergeant Tyshawn Walters, and Sergeant Roger Lindsay. For the 2nd Battalion in waiting is Warrant Officer Class 2, Cecil Johnson, Staff Sergeant Samuel Stewart, Sergeant Gre Gregory Walters, and Sergeant Stanford Ray. For the 3rd Battalion in waiting, Warrant Officer Class 2, Nicholas Russell, Staff Sergeant Cleverton Harris, Sergeant Peter Stewart, and Sergeant Carl Farkison. As they make their way off the parade grounds, ladies and gentlemen, the end of an era for these emblems of unit pride. The soldiers of the 1st, 2nd and 3rd Battalions of the, of the Jamaica Regiment will see these colors on parade for the final time today. The parade commander, Colonel Rohan Johnson, now prepares a parade for the uncasing, blessing, consecration, and presentation of new colors. The parade will be formed into three sides of a hollow square, and the drummers marched by the drum major into the hollow square to pile the drums for the ceremony. The props team will also march out the microphones and kneeling stools. Guards will form hollow square. Number one and number five guards, inward boom! Quick march!
Once all is set for the ceremony, the senior major will give the command for the new colors to be marched into the three sides of the hollow square for the consecration and the presentation. The new colors having been marshaled by the officer in charge of the colors, Captain Shane Patterson is now marched forward into the hollow square. Colors for the Jamaica Regiment is carried by Sergeant Ricardo Campbell and Sergeant Abba Douglas. The color orderly is Private Grant A. The officer given the task one case and lay the colors for the Jamaica Regiment is Major Andre Edwards. The new colors for the Maritime Air Cyber Command is carried by Sergeant Richard Guy and Sergeant Yannick James. The color orderly is Private Hyman F. The officer given the task to uncase and lay the colors for the Maritime Air Cyber Command is Lieutenant Commander Rohan Rogers. The new colors for the support 
Brigade is carried by Sergeant Oral Dryden and Sergeant Nicholas Brown. The color orderly is Private Cohen J. The officer given the task to uncase and lay the colors for the support brigade is Major Eldon Morgan. The colors for the Caribbean Military Academy carried by Sergeant Damian Brown and Sergeant Steve Lawson. The color orderly is Private Brown S. The officer given the task to uncase and lay the colors for the Caribbean Military Academy is Captain Mario Sahadio. The colors for the Jamaica National Reserve is carried by Sergeant Devon Van Riel and Sergeant Oral Bourne. The color orderly is Private Morgan S. The officer given the task to uncase and lay the colors for the Jamaica National Reserve is Major Marlon Stevens. So the colors are being laid on the piled drums in preparation for the blessing and the consecration. With all colors having been uncased and laid, the officers, orderlies, and sergeant have been marched out of the hollow square. We now prepare for the consecration ceremony. The parade commander, Colonel Rohan Johnson, now prepares to invite the clergy to do the blessing and consecration of the new colors. Most reverend sir, on behalf of the brigades of the Jamaica Defense Force, we ask that you bid God's blessings on these colors. We are ready to do so. as 
lot as people in all ages have made for themselves signs which God's providence we following this ancient custom stand before God to ask his blessing on these blood and to pray that there may be an abiding some symbol of what you give towards us happening and our country and a sign of our resolve to guard, preserve and sustain the great traditions of bravery and self-sacrifice of which we are the proud inheritors. Let us pray. Almighty God, from whom all power and wisdom are derived, we humbly ask you to bless your servant, our gracious sovereign, Lady Queen Elizabeth, let your grace enlighten her, your goodness confirm her, and your providence protect her, and grant that she and all who are in authority under her may advance your glory and the welfare of her people through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Lord, our God, who from your throne Look upon all the kingdoms of the earth. Bless our land that it may continue a place and a people to serve you to the end of time. Guide the government of this country and grant all who live in our flag be mindful of the rich heritage of our people coming from many races that they may work for the good of others, according to the example of him who died in service of all humanity, your son, our dear Jesus Christ. Amen. Pride! All right! In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, we consecrate and set apart these colors that they may be a sign of our duty toward our Queen and our country in the sight of God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit, we consecrate and set apart these colors, that they may be a sign of our duty toward our Queen and our country, in the sight of God. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, we consecrate and set apart these colors, that they may be a sign of our duty toward our Queen and our country, in the sight of God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, we consecrate and set apart these colors that they may be a sign of our duty toward our queen and our country in the sight of God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit, we consecrate and set apart these colors that they may be a sign of our duty 
toward our queen and our country in the sight of God. Let us now pray the prayer that Jesus Christ taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. O Lord, over all things, accept, we pray, our service this day. Bless what we have blessed in your name. Let your gracious favor rest on those who shall follow the colors now about to be committed to their trust. Give them courage, and may their courage ever rest on their sure confidence in you. May they show self-control in the hour of success, patience in the time of adversity, and may their honor lie in seeking the honor and glory of your great name. Guide the counsels of those who shall lead them and sustain them by your help in the time of need. Grant that they may all so faithfully serve you in this life and they fail not finally to find an entrance into your heavenly kingdom through the merits of your blessed Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come upon you this day and forevermore. Amen. Once the blessing and consecration have been completed, the parade commander will order the officers for the colors to come forward. Yes, hey! Officers for the colors. Quick, march! His Excellency, the Governor General, will then be invited to present the new colors and address the force. Accepting the Queen's colors for the Jamaica Regiment is Captain Melbourne Williams.
Accepting the regimental colors for the Jamaica Regiment is Captain O'Shane Harris. Accepting the Queen's Colors on behalf of the Maritime Air Cyber Command is Captain Christoph Smith. And accepting the Regimental Colors is Captain Cleon Thompson. Accepting the Queen's colors for the support brigade is Captain Javal Dunn. And accepting the regimental colors for support brigade is Captain Tajay Davis. Accepting the Queen's Colors for the CMA is Captain Xavier Scott. And accepting the Regimental Colors on behalf of the CMA, Captain Claude Rose. The final set of colors to be presented are those of the Jamaica National Reserve. Accepting the Queen's colors for the JNR is Captain Troy Young. And accepting the regimental colors is Captain Osmar Fiddler. Prime Minister, Chief of Defense Staff, members of the clergy, officers and enlisted members of the Jamaica Defense Force, ladies and gentlemen, seven years ago, I had the honor of presenting the 2nd Battalion of the Jamaica Regiment, its second stand of colors. Despite the changes in the Jamaica Defense Force since 2014, the motivation and dedication to duty have remained unchanged. Today, I am pleased to present the new colors to all five brigades of the Jamaica Defense Force. The historic significance of this ceremony should be indelibled in the mind of every serving member. These colors are visual symbols of your loyalty to this nation and the Defense Force. They are now part of your tradition and identity. 
I congratulate you on this singular achievement of having five Queen's Colors and Formation Colors on parade. This new dispensation represents the maturity of the force and the recognition of its visible transformation. I have every confidence that the brigades will protect their new colors and the three that are retired will become treasured parts of the Army's archives. I anticipate that all serving members will welcome this development with renewed spirit and pride and reaffirm their commitment to continue to deliver their best as they move forward to realize their goals. Thank you. Your Excellency, Sir Patrick Allen, Governor General, the Most Honorable Andrew Holness, Prime Minister of Jamaica, Lieutenant General Rocky Mead, Chief of Defense Staff, His Grace, the Most Reverend Kenneth Richards, other distinguished guests, members of the General Staff Board, other officers, senior and junior ranks, members of the viewing public, good morning. Sir, on behalf of the officers and enlisted members of the Jamaica Defense Force, it is my duty and privilege to thank you for presenting us with the Brigade and Queen's Colors today. The presentation of colors to our five brigades is a poignant reminder of all that we have achieved throughout our almost 60-year history, as well as a reminder of what we have yet to accomplish. The historical significance of today's presentation of colors will forever reverberate to the hearts and minds of all service members, both retired and serving. It is also a call to arms for our young people to envision themselves as part of this noble institution. The colors will serve as a constant reminder of our duty to serve the people of Jamaica, our duty to adhere to the core values of the force, and our unwavering commitment to achieve the strategic end state, to transform the Jamaica Defense Force, to impact the culture of violence in Jamaica, to influence the region, and to impact the world. Thank you, sir. Once the new colors have been presented, ladies and gentlemen, let me invite His Excellency, the Governor General, back to his seat. The guards now will present arms to the colors for the first time, and the national anthem will be played. At that time, ladies and gentlemen, I will ask you to stand.
insights. Quick, march. Please stand. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. You may be seated. Order! Red rank! One pet forward! March! Guards will form three ranks from two ranks. And now, ladies and gentlemen, as the parade prepares to march past in slow and quick time, I again invite His Excellency the Governor General to the saluting days for the march past. of the Jamaica Defense Force, each in two halves, marching past to the tune of By Land and Sea, composed by Kay Alford. A mass of 634 men 
and women, and 44 officers of the JDF decked out in the scarlet tunic of their military ceremonial number one dress uniform, marching at the regulation rate of 65 paces to the minute. And as they turn, you will notice that when they get close to wherever you are and their colors pass you, you're asked to stand. saluting days, being led by the parade commander, Colonel Rohan Johnson, followed by the parade second in command, Lieutenant Colonel Rudolph Reynolds. There followed by the number one guard, ladies and gentlemen, furnished by the Jamaica Regiment. Notice the officers in front. Once they get to the saluting days, the eyes right will be given, the officers will salute, the sword salute is called the flourish. The number one guard is being led by the guard commander, Major Finiki Rowe, commanding the number one division. The subaltern of the number one division is Lieutenant Shanice Williams, the right guide Warrant Officer Class 2, Winston Pitter. The left guide, Staff Sergeant Christopher Walters. Behind the number one division is the Parade Drill Sergeant. Warrant Officer Class 2, Brian Martin. In between the two guards are the Queens and Regimental Colors of the Jamaica Regiment. The Ensign carrying the Queens Colors is Captain Melbourne Williams. The Ensign carrying the Regimental Colors is Captain Shane Harris, the color party for the Jamaica, Jamaica Regiment, Warrant Officer Class 2, Ricardo Lodge, Staff Sergeant Frederick Francis, Sergeant Ricardo Campbell, and Sergeant Abba Douglas. The number two division of the Jamaica Regiment is commanded by Major Andres Pierce. The subaltern of the number two division is Lieutenant Ray Maria Campbell. Next approaching the saluting days is the number two guard furnished by the Maritime Air and the Cyber Command. The number three division is commanded by Major Gladstone Allen. The subaltern of the number three division is Lieutenant Darrell Gordon. The right guide is Warrant Officer Class Two, Dalston Fagan, with the members of the JDF Air Wing in their signature sky blue berets. They are making up the first half of the guard. The brand new colors of the Maritime Air Cyber Command being carried by Captain Christophe Smith for the Queen's colors and Captain Cleon Thompson for the regimental colors. The remainder of the color party for the Maritime Air Cyber Command is Warrant Officer Class 2, Ricardo Robinson, Staff Sergeant Gary Hansen, Sergeant Yannick James, and Sergeant Richard Guy. The number three division commanded by Lieutenant Commander LeVar Carter. The subaltern of the number three division is Sub-Lieutenant Wijon Henry, and the left guide is Chief Petty Officer O'Kella Fullerton. Then they're followed by the number three guard of the support brigade. The support brigade, the, they're led by the guard commander, Major Joel Nelson, commanding the number five division. The subaltern of the number five di division, Lieutenant Tony and Panton. The right guide, warrant of the class to Richard Cohen. The left guide, Staff Sergeant Gaynor Reed. 
The Queen's colors being carried by Captain Javel Dunn. The regimental colors by Captain T.J. Davis. The color party, W02 Dwayne Spencer. Staff Sergeant O'Keefe Ainsley, Sergeant Oral Dryden, and Sergeant Nicholas Brown. Then there's the Brigade Sergeant Major W01 Michael Moulton, the number six division commanded by Major Danelia Crawford, the subaltern of the number six division, Lieutenant Adrian Thorpe. Next approaching the saluting days, the number four guard are furnished by the Brigade of the Caribbean Military Academy, the CMA, the number seven division commanded by Major Akeen Horton James, the subaltern of the number seven division is Lieutenant Fitzroy Simpson. The right guide is WO2 Joshua Knight. And the left guide, Staff Sergeant Nicholas Halsall. The color party of the CMA is next. The Queen's color being carried by Captain Xavier Scott. And the regimental color being carried by Captain Claude Rose. The remainder of the color party, WO2 Wavell Walker. Staff Sergeant Courtney Clark, Sergeant Damien Brown. Sergeant Steve Lawson, then the number eight division, commanded by Major Jennifer McKenzie, the subaltern of the number eight division, Lieutenant to John Scottman. The number five guard is furnished by the Jamaica National Reserve. They are led by the guard commander and commander of the number nine division, Major Marlon Stevens. The subaltern of the number nine division is Second Lieutenant Rochelle Ellis. There's a color party, the Queen's colors being carried by Captain Troy Young and the regimental colors being carried by Captain Osmar Fiddler between both divisions. The remainder of the color party of the Jamaica National Reserve includes Warrant Officer Class 2 Nicholas Edwards, Staff Sergeant Jimmy Williams, Sergeant Devon Van Riel, and Sergeant Oral Bourne. The number 10 division is commanded by Major Andrew Lamb. The subaltern of the number 10 division is Second Lieutenant Dwight Johnson, and to his left, the parade adjutant, Captain Calvin Dryden. Five guards representing the five brigades, ladies and gentlemen, in slow time on this, the 25th day of November, 2021. Pump and pageantry, precision drill, and military discipline on display here this morning on the polo grounds in Upper Park Camp. Pride and excitement indeed. But ladies and gentlemen, if you've enjoyed the parade in slow time, then brace yourselves as the parade prepares to break into quick time. has been changed, ladies and gentlemen, Globe and Laurel, composed by V. Dunn, being played as the brigades make their way up the back stretch in preparation for the break into quick time.
so they break into quick time. Stepping to the tune of Colonel Bogey, composed by Kay Alford, being played at the regulation rate of 116 paces to the minute. And as they turn, head towards the B stands, let me remind you that as the colors pass by your location, you're required to stand. So as they advance and approach the saluting days, if you look closely at the arm swing as the body of troops marches, you will notice timing and precision. This ties into the confidence and ultimately the strong sense of discipline that all soldiers must possess. Approaches saluting days, ladies and gentlemen, for the second time and prepare for the ice right. The band that changes tunes. Proente, the tune of the Jamaica Regiment being played as the Jamaica Regiment passes the saluting days. It's a combination of the 1st Battalion, 2nd Battalion, 4th Battalion, and Combat Support Battalion marches arranged by W01 Paul Johnson. The Jamaica Regiment makes way as the Maritime Air Cyber Command approaches the saluting days. Semper Vigilante is a tune representing the Maritime Air and Cyber Command, a combination of the JDF Coast Guard and the JDF Air Wing Unit March also, arranged by Warrant Officer Class 1, P. Johnson. Support Brigade salutes to the right. Servite Sumas is the tune being played. A combination of the Support and Services Battalion March, the One Engineer Regiment March, the Health Services Corps March, and the Corps of Military Police Unit March. Again, arranged by W01 Paul Johnson. band shifts another gear. Fortitude of the Mind is a tune being played for the formation of the Caribbean Military Academy as they approach the saluting days. This tune is composed by Warrant Officer Class 1, Albert Sean Hurd. Finally, ladies and gentlemen, the Jamaica National Reserve passes the saluting days. Officium, the JNR march is a combination of the 3rd Battalion JNR, the 6th Battalion JNR, the 9th Battalion JNR marches, arranged by W01 Gregory Nicholson of the Jamaica Regiment Band.
march past the saluting days twice, and now as they make their way up the back stretch in preparation for the halt, the band again changes tune, ladies and gentlemen. strikes of the tune, the swing march, arranged and composed by Henry Mancini. Let me tell you, ladies and gentlemen, the soldiers of the JDF have adopted this tune as their own. They say whenever they're on parade marching and the tune is being played by the band, the tune has the ability to lift the spirit and makes you want to put a little pep in your step. The swing march has a very catchy beat, ladies and gentlemen. Therefore, if you're feeling the rhythm in your bones, then you can go right ahead, tapping your feet to the beat of the music. Ladies and gentlemen, if you did enjoy that march pass, please show your appreciation by giving a round of applause for the men and women of Jamaica's Defense Force. At this point in time, I would like to invite His Excellency, the Governor General, back to his seat whilst we prepare for the advance in review order.
Now, ladies and gentlemen, as the parade prepares to advance in review order, I'd like to again invite His Excellency, the Governor General, to the saluting days for the Royal Salute. Please be reminded you'll be required to stand for the Royal Salute. Please stand. Please remain standing, ladies and gentlemen. Order! Arms! Ladies and gentlemen, if you look up and to the south, you should see three aircraft approaching in a three-ship VIC formation utilizing the Bell 429 platform. The platform has been led by Major Jamie Walsh, the fleet commander, and he is accompanied by Captain Denver Ennis, the number two ship is being flown by Captain Lucian Moulton, whilst the third ship is being flown by Captain Miguel Ross, and he is accompanied by Captain Cody Ware. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Now you may be seated. As we prepare for the departures of our dignitaries, ladies and gentlemen. Hey! Thunder! Ice! The vehicle for His Excellency, the Governor General, the Most Honorable Sir Patrick Allen, will roll around into position first. Done! Easy!
So as His Excellency the Governor General departs, notice his identifying standard is slowly being lowered and will be folded, signifying that he is no longer present on these parade grounds. And so the vehicle for the Prime Minister and Minister of Defense, the Most Honorable Andrew Holness, will roll around into position next. So as the Prime Minister departs the grounds, his identifying standard is also being lowered and will be folded, signifying that he's no longer present here on the parade grounds. The vehicle for the Chief of Defense Staff, Lieutenant General Rocky Meade and Mrs. Meade will roll into position next. So, so the Chief of Defense Staff, Lieutenant General Mead and Mrs. Mead departs. The CDSA standard is also lowered and will be folded, signifying that he's no longer present here on these parade grounds. And now we await the vehicle that conveys his grace, the Most Reverend Kenneth Richards. His Grace departs the parade grounds, ladies and gentlemen, and now the colors will be marched off, followed by the falling out of the officers. Please be reminded you'll be required to stand for the marching off of the colors. stand.
Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. You may be seated. Far left, the officers. Yes, sir. The guards will now be marched back to the formal point under the command of the Brigade Sergeant Major Warrant Officer Class 1, Michael Moulton, where he will conduct dismissal procedures. Guards, in close order, inward strike. Shoulder out. Move to the right in three. Out. Turn. By the leg. Quick.
band and drums as the five guards representing the five regiments make their way back to the formal point. How about another round of applause for Jamaica's Defense Force, ladies and gentlemen? Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. That concludes the presentation of colors. I'd also like to express sincere thanks to our assistants in the control booth. Warrant Officer, Class 2, Robert McLeod, Corporal Dwight Ingram, Lance Corporal Roger Miller, and Lance Corporal Sean Morgan. Also to our air traffic controllers in the tower, Sergeant Ricardo Brown and Corporal Kemar Castro. I sincerely hope you enjoyed the parade. As we continue to be Jamaica's defense force, doing our part to achieve the strategic end state of transforming the JDF, changing the culture of violence in Jamaica, influencing the region, and impacting the world. Therefore, ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the Chief of Defense Staff, Lieutenant General Rocky Meade, I would like to thank you very much for coming and sharing in this historic day for our military, whether you were here physically or virtually. We are indeed very grateful for your presence. Enjoy the rest of your day. Continue to be responsible citizens by observing the Ministry of Health's COVID-19 protocols and be safe. One love and in the true spirit of friendship, as the motto of the JDF suggests, we continue to move forward. Thank you and good morning. <laughs>